Well, here we have a quite an unusual set. I've never seen one of these before. And this is an in, a Interceptor TC300, made in Korea for Parkinson's Automotive. It looks a bit like people will say the. Um, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? I'm going to say the SMC Oscar 1, but people said the Oscar 1 looked like the American High Gain 5. But it certainly doesn't come out of the same factory because the High Gain 5 was made by Cybernet and the SMC Oscar 1 was made by Cybernet and this is made by clearly made by the same Korean firm who make the Harry Moss 325 which was the subject of our repair video a few days ago. Now I've got a, I bought a scrap chassis in some years ago. It's incomplete and it's had mains up it, so I don't think it's going to be coming back to life. But oh look, it's the Harry Moss version of the TC three hundred, and that one's got the right knobs apart from there. So they're the right knobs, and these are the wrong knobs. So the Harry Moss TC three hundred, and I've just said it's the same make quite clearly as the Harry Moss 325 so I don't know which factory that was the ident on the board shows again it's a custom set and it's TC300 I remember Parkinson's writing that they chose this manufacturer because the factory was next to theirs in Korea so they could keep an eye on how things were progressing these have an SWR alarm and this interesting bar graph display and one of our engineers has previously switched this on and it is kind of working. So we'll go through that. I was able to get a circuit diagram from Knights at Curtin and Lindsay. I didn't have one because I've never seen one before. I can't see anything wrong with the circuit. I did read somewhere on the internet that somebody said they're about as bad as a Harvard good buddy. Well, I'm afraid I think a Harvard good buddy would have fallen apart by the time um, we'd got this far into it. It did come in an unhygienic state and it went through the the workshop dishwasher. Well, not the board didn't, but the um, bezel and the knobs and the microphone case. And it's an original microphone, which is uh, always nice. So I've got myself a little chart I've made up from the circuit diagram and hopefully we'll be able to align it with you. And so we'll, we're not going to do the VCO because I haven't got the uh, information but it says Sanuel C7136 synthesizer IC. So I've no doubt we could find our way around it if it wasn't in lock. Now the first transmit coil which we've got a note of here is clearly going to be these. That's going to be VCO. I presume that is. That's going to be receive. Those are the things I think the VCO. There isn't a trimmer for um, the 10.24 crystal, so I don't know how quite how that works at this stage. That's going to be the receive detector. So I presume we're going to start with those two and work up our way. And I presume that's some kind of um, harmonic trap up there, I'll just go and see, you can see the light. there is another coil up there it won't be anything to do with the transmit setup and then we've got a trimmer on the aerial socket just like we have with the Harry Moss 325 I've just realised these are all filled with wax so you've got on off volume squelch RF gain extension speaker on the back it's a 3 pin unit end type connector for the power and then the high low power switch is on the back panel there. So with that we'll try and melt the wax in the first, uh, let's see what we've got first. Uh, we've got exactly 3 watts.
another go at that. Now we'll move on to the next one. Shouldn't be out really because they haven't been disturbed quite clearly but after 30 years it's best to go through everything. I can't give you the coil numbers on these because uh, I can't see the, the labelling very well. So far we've not made any difference whatsoever. And we move on to X1 it says here. That's what it looks like. Yellow to one for them. Spot it. Gain slightly. Now I'll just backtrack therefore. I've always said they're slightly interactive these. Wow, we're doing 3.1 watts now. suddenly struck me, I hope we were on channel 20 and we are. Three and a half watts. That's fine. Now I'll just go for that trimmer capacitor. That's 4.1. I'll leave it at that because that's in spec. I'm just going to check we've got channel 1 and 40 somewhere around the same power. We have there. That's balanced it right. Nothing worse than having one watt on channel 40 and uh, four and a half watts on channel um, one, is there? Right, we'll just tidy all those up. So we've got the full power now. So the next thing, I'll just drop the um, attenuators to see if we get four, a 0.5 watt. I, have to I don't know why we're getting feedback, but it doesn't like the way the test set's uh, hooked up with the extension speaker. Um, right, on low power we have got, we should have 400 milliwatts and we have got 120 milliwatts. So, now I've got no idea what presets do what and I'm going to have to make notes of this as we go along. So chances are that's either going to be the RF power meter or the low power setting. That's the low, that is the... Um, RF meter. So what we'll do is I'll go back into the uh, full power and I'll set that up while it's in front of me. What I've done, I've just taken it into the next to the last dot in the bar graph, if you look at that. 
it's not calibrated so now when I go into low power so I'll just make a note that that is the RF meter it may not even be adjustable for um, low power some aren't anyway there's the preset there at the back we'll just go for that Well, it's not that. It doesn't matter what I twiddle because I can get it all back uh, as it should be. It was clearly not that. It's not going to be that, is it? So, uh, but I'll just adjust it anyway. I can't see any other presets, so it looks to me like the low power arrangement isn't actually adjustable. I certainly couldn't see it on the circuit diagram anyway. Anyway, it's doing 120 milliwatts on low power, which I would say was out of spec. But there we go. Switch that back to full power, and now we'll just check the deviation. So I'll get the little oscillator off the shelf. Um, that's what 1.8 but of course I'm out of fiddle with things could easily be the one down there but it isn't it's that one there So that's now 2.3. Let's give it the whistle test. <whistles> oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's well over the top. That's interesting. <whistles> Wallow. That's it. 2.5. And I'll just make a note on the sheet that that is deviation. And that leaves us with two variable resistors. And chances are that one's going to be the RF at uh, the um, S meter, and the other's going to be the squelch adjustment. But we'll see. Now we'll need to get the see if the radio is on frequency. And it's what twenty seven seven nine one one six. Now, as I say, there isn't a, a trimmer for that, and I just wonder if the coil next to it, which I'll be very careful with, because I hope it. Otherwise, it would be something to do with the VCO. It may be done with that. No. Okay, so is it within specification? Bear in mind, those Uniden radios don't have an adjustment for the uh, crystal. It's 2779116, it should be 2779125, that's well within specification, um, it's neither here nor there, but I'd like to have pulled it up. And that concludes the transmit side of the Interceptor TC300.